Welp fam, here we are live again for the second time today, and I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> um, I have scoured the internet to try to find the opening remarks of what is this seemingly ghost, seemingly like a ghost event. Uh, it is at the Moynihan Lecture of Political Science and Public Policy in Washington, D.C., and I've been unable to find a location. I've been unable to find a feed. Really, it just seems like it's not happening. I even went as far to email the person. Ah, well, there is a confirmation from the awesome Jessica Rachel Erfer that the event is not being live streamed. That's a big bummer. However, I figure what we could do, uh, unless people can find something that I can't, we could watch some of Jerome Powell from just about an hour, two hours ago in the open uh, committee. And at least we get a little Chirpow love there. This is unexpected. I will say no matter what, we will be live on the first for the FOMC where he will speak live. This is kind of a bummer. I uh, was really looking forward to this. But he will be speaking live next Wednesday. So he spoke last Wednesday. He's speaking today in about three minutes and then uh, speaking again at the FOMC meeting next Wednesday. I didn't watch any of the open market committee. I figure man, at least there's some Chirpow content. We could, we could give it a try. Here at, Get this uh, audio Jordan, right. So online. <clears throat> Today we will consider a proposal to revise the board's rule that implements the Dodd-Frank Act requirements to cap debit cards interchange fees. Consistent with the statute and the board's current rule, the proposal would apply only to debit card issuers with at least $10 billion in consolidated assets. We will also consider the issuance of our regular report on debit card transaction costs. Vice Chair Barr leads the board's committee on payments, clearing, and settlement, and will offer introductory remarks before we hear the staff presentation on the proposals. Ooh, one second. I want to thank staff for all of your work. I look forward to hearing your presentations, and I now turn it over to Vice Chair Barr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to thank the staff for their hard work in developing this proposal to update the debit One card second. interchange fee cap of Regulation II and for the related report. The proposal represents the culmination of extensive staff analysis and consultation with the Board's Committee on Payments, Clearing, and Settlement. Debit cards continue to be the most popular method of making everyday purchases by a wide margin. Data collected by the Federal Reserve have shown significant and consistent growth in the use of debit cards over the last two decades, such that by 2021, debit cards accounted for over half of all non-cash payments performed by consumers and businesses in the United States. i going to give this a pause quick. So <laughs> this, this could end up being the spiciest content we ever make. Uh, Rachel replied again, I guess her message didn't finish, and she said... She would be happy to record the meeting and send it to me as a video, which is really dope. But I replied to Rachel and asked, would it be possible? I kind of uh, explained what's going on. Would it be possible for you to send me or record and then send me Jerome's opening statement? So if this happens, we will be the only humans on the planet who have seen this opening remark that, weren't, that aren't currently there at the uh, event. That'd be really cool. I'm going to monitor this. I guess we'll just let this play for a little bit. I'll do a little TA and stuff. This growth uh, in popularity of debit let's put cards this back more on. broadly That'd be really wild. speaks to the attractiveness of debit cards as a means of payment. With consumers and merchants viewing debit cards as a safe and convenient way to make payments using funds and bank accounts. Interchange fees are an important element of debit card transactions. These fees are paid by a merchant's bank to a consumer's bank for each debit card transaction. As such, interchange fees are a cost of credit card of a cost of card transactions to merchants and a source of revenue from card transactions for card issuing banks. <clears throat> In a provision of the Dodd-Frank Act, Congress directed the board to establish standards for assessing whether the amount of any interchange fee that an issuer may receive with respect to a debit card transaction is reasonable and proportional to the cost incurred by the issuer with respect to the transaction. The board implemented this statutory requirement in 2011 through Regulation II. At the time, the board stated that it would adjust the interchange fee cap in the future as appropriate 
based on debit card related cost data the statute requires us to collect. The proposal would amend the regulation applicable to the interchange fees that large banks can receive for debit card transactions and is intended to fulfill the statutory requirement that these fees be reasonable and proportional to costs. As staff will explain in more detail, key debit card related costs incurred by large debit card issuers have changed significantly since the interchange fee cap was established. The proposed rule would update the interchange fee cap for the first time since it was adopted to reflect the changes in debit card related costs so that the cap remains reasonable and proportional to these costs. The proposal also would establish a process for updating the interchange fee cap going forward on a transparent, predictable basis. Staff has developed the proposal in close consultation with the Board's Committee on Payments, Clearing, and Settlement, and I believe that the proposal is ready for the Board's consideration. The proposal provides for a 90-day comment period. Public input is a critical part of our rulemaking process, and I look forward to reviewing the comments we will receive. I am pleased to turn things over to Chris Wozniak for the staff presentation. Thank you, Vice Chair. I will be discussing the two matters that the board is being asked to vote on today. I will first discuss the proposed revisions to Regulation II's interchange fee cap. My remarks on the proposed revisions will provide background on the statute and the current interchange fee cap, the reasons for revising the cap, and an overview of the proposed revisions. I will then conclude by briefly discussing the report on the debit card industry. Regulation II implements Section 1075 of the Dodd-Frank Act. Among other things, this statute requires the board to establish standards for assessing whether the amount of any interchange fee received by a debit card issuer for a debit card transaction is reasonable and proportional to the cost incurred by the issuer with respect to the transaction. The statute also sets forth certain types of costs that the board must consider in establishing the standards, as well as certain types of costs that the board may not consider. Furthermore, the statute authorizes the board to allow for an adjustment to such interchange fee standards to account for fraud prevention costs incurred by an issuer, provided the issuer meets certain fraud-related standards established by the board. By statute, the interchange fee standards do not apply to certain government-administered debit cards, certain other prepaid cards, or debit card issuers that, together with affiliates, have assets less than $10 billion. I will refer to large debit card issuers to which the interchange fees standards generally apply, that is, those with consolidated assets of at least $10 billion, as covered issuers. Hmm. Hmm. The board fulfilled its statutory going to pause it here for a minute guys i love you all for joining uh this has been a little bit of a twist a little bit of a twist so jerome powell is speaking live right now at this political science and public policy meeting in dc to which it must be the most secretive event ever uh i contacted i directly contacted the event organizer who got back to me really quickly shout out to rachel um and said that it's not being streamed. This is 2023. No offense, Rachel, if you're out there. I'm blown away. This is the first time Trapau has ever spoken that we are not able to find a live feed. I did request her to send me the video, so we will be able to post that video. Uh, I don't know if it'll be ready today or what. I didn't uh, specify a time. I even asked her, though, if it was possible to record on a cell phone Jerome's opening statements and send it to me, which... Uh, not the highest of hopes on that one, guys. Not the highest of hopes. That would be insane. Hopefully it does happen, but I'm not going to get my hopes up. This is the open board committee from today, which apparently Chirpow doesn't speak that much at. Maybe he's a little overextended. I, I was calling him probably a little sleepy earlier. I was like, for his, for uh, that man at his age, he's uh, speaking a lot because he spoke last Wednesday, speaking this Wednesday, FOMC next week, Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Something's up. Something's happening. There's big news coming. My hunch is that we are not going to see interest rates increase this year. That that I kind of think is what's going to happen in uh, on the first. Maybe we can do a little recap here. We can do a little recap uh, of the notes. Let's see. I have a little info. Give me a second. Sure. 
it's funny because a lot of news places reported Powell is going to be speaking at this event and then just nothing. It's just radio silence after that. Uh, so let's do a little recap here. Basically, the comments that we saw last week confirmed that they're going to avoid raising interest rates for the second time in a row uh, while, when policymakers meet on the 31st or 1st of November. The chairman, Chirp Howe, also stated that recent increases in long-term treasury yields continue. It may reduce the need for more rate hikes. So just that language alone is a little softening, going back a little bit on what they were saying and more in the camp of no interest rate hikes. Quote, given the uncertainties and risks and how far we have come, the committee is proceeding carefully. A, a typical nothing burger statement from Chappell. Uh, said Thursday at the Economic Club of New York. That's what we covered last week. And that was Wednesday, not Thursday. I pre- oh, no, it was Thursday. My bad. Uh, we will make decisions about the extent of additional policy firming and how long policy will remain restrictive based on the totality of, you know it, chat, the incoming data. My hunch also is that maybe someone found the data. They followed a, an ancient treasure map across the sea in a wild, whimsical adventure and uncovered a treasure chest full of the data Chirp Howe has not been able to get. The quote continues, uh... The quote continues or it doesn't... Yeah. We'll make decisions about the extent of additional policy firming and how long uh, it will remain restricted based on the data and the evolving outlook and balance of risks. So at the same time, recent economic statistics indicated that the U.S. retail sales did beat expectations and industrial production increased in September while non-farm payrolls added an average 266,000 over the previous three-month period. Last month, authorities held their policy rate uh, constant in a range of 5.25 to 5.5 and their predictions showed that 12 of nine officials forecasted one more rate increase this year so interesting caveat it is suggested or there's evidence that may say that we're not going to get one on november 1st in exactly one week we'll be live here tune in uh but 12 out of 19 of them are still forecasting one more rate hike so i do believe we have one final 2023 FOMC. Let me see. FOMC dates 2023. I believe we have one more after. Yes, we do. So we have October 31st slash November 1st, and then we have one more in December 12th to 13th. So if there is no rate hike in a week, which is probable, we may see it December 13th. And we absolutely will be live. We'll absolutely be covering that. Don't you worry. And we promise we'll have actual feed data for it actual feed data um let's look at this really quick uh major events coming up i'm really glad all of you tuned in i feel so embarrassed uh to let you down there was no way to really know i should have maybe i should have reached out to rachel earlier but typically when your pal speaks people are listening and it's everywhere uh next week jobless claims Wednesday, Chirpow speaks, but no one will hear it. Uh, initial jobless claims, core PCE. So we have some big numbers coming up next week, for sure. Oh, man, this is embarrassing. I guess I might as well go over a little bit of what we were doing earlier. We did live stream for two hours earlier because Bitcoin got spicy. Basically, we were looking for a move to 40.4K. That happened. And then a retracement up to 34.8. And during the in-between time of that stream and now, it happened. That's another W in the bank for live stream setups. I will say, guys, I don't get them right all the time. But I do say this a lot. Pay attention. When I start hitting trades consecutively, I've been saying this for years, usually that means the market's trending bullish. Does that mean we're trending bullish right now? I think that's actually a pretty safe bet as we've hit 35K, retested it today. We have, at the moment, a higher low. Uh, we did have also placed a short at this level. Typically, if you have a long into a take profit, a short is a probable position or a logical position to take. That short at 34.8 is still chilling. I don't really like this trade. I'm not going to take it, but uh, still in bounds, still in, in on the table. The dollar pulling a sneaky on everyone the dollar must be listening to chirp uh at wherever the heck this is but 
must be listening to him as we had a little breakout earlier today and we have seen higher highs now moving more towards uh, let's see our yearly high of 107.3 this doesn't really look the best to me we have two hours uh, traditional markets are closed we have two hours 14 minutes for the dollar to close this kind of looks like a candle that's going to close lower doesn't it um just looking at kind of this trend line maybe 106 420 blaze it i like that uh we did get 420, 420 likes earlier today so i love you all by the way kind of looks like a candle that will do that let's be real uh it is only wednesday so we have two more days in the week or maybe we're gonna get something surprising bitcoin has been throwing surprises at us and Actually, so have socks. We're going to look at those next. The dollar right now up against last week's open, looking for that bullish engulfing close above 106.57. Let me check this monthly quick. Monthly, that's signs of exhaustion. I would say without a strong dollar rally into the end of October, so in the next six days, I see exhaustion here. We have expansive candles with small bottom wicks, and now potentially we have a little spinning top doji with a high wick and a bottom wick. If we don't get a strong close, meaning probably above 107.3, like the weekly high, that may be a sign of buying exhaustion on the dollar. However, since we've broken 105.9, 106.6 is and has been the retracement target from the dollar's high to the low for a long time, and we've been waiting for it for what seems like forever. Uh, that's going to be a play by ear one. We're just going to play that one by ear. If we look over at stocks are having a really troubling day, but not so troubling for our viewers as we were short on the stock market anyway. Uh, the, and the head and shoulders pattern on the S&P 500 does appear to be playing out. The target for the setup here for me, 4,100, looking pretty good. And with today's lower low breaking past, looks like Monday's uh, wick low, more downside does seem probable. It's not just... The S&P 500, though, it's also the NASDAQ pulling a similar move. Both shorts looking great. Looking super great. Um, target for that, I probably 13,583. Look for a bounce there. Some kind of retracement. If we do get a quick sell-off, maybe, I don't know, chirp house this on crazy today or something comes out before Friday. If we do see a sell-off that happens quickly this week down to that level, which I kind of doubt, but it's possible. I would likely be looking for a return to that trend line. Uh, however long it takes is going to dictate how low that number is, but some kind of bounce, it may end up getting sold short at 14,590. So I think both of these potentially could have short entries, and that's the gist of it right now. Turning over to GBTC, it's interesting. GBTC just keeps being different from Bitcoin. Actually, today's candle looking pretty damn good, I'm not going to lie. 26.5 was the resistance we were looking for. Today's candle opened above it, traded below, traded below, above, and now, actually, it's closed. It's closed above, and I like this hourly, open and bullish engulf. That's an interesting setup for tomorrow's trading day. Where does that resistance come from? All the way back here. All the way. GBTC's high in 2017. No, that's not the right one. My bad. All the way over here from May consolidation uh breakout and inevitable fall to doomtown i believe that's like a weekly right weekly or monthly i don't really need to look it up but why not there we go monthly right around here this line's been here you can argue that it was actually lower i wouldn't disagree i think that the reality of that though is it's not so much maybe the bottom of it but the top the high price of that resistance maybe up at the 33 percent mark that'd be 23 percent gain from right now what's really spicy is that we were watching gbtc and saying it is weirdly not behaving like bitcoin and i think the only thing you could view that the only lens you could view that in is that it's more bullish and that perhaps bitcoin has some buying power coming in and that did happen that did play out what a beautiful freaking rally man what a beautiful rally. GBTC, that premium is getting destroyed. I'm kind of curious what the premium is at now. By the way, guys, please smash the likes and subscribes. I know that this has been not the stream we were expecting, but sometimes that happens. Make sure you jump in the Discord. Uh, Femex, our sponsor, video description 
or link in the video description below. Also pinned to the top of the chat is our newest long form video. It's really good, but it's struggling in the algorithm. If you guys could give it a watch, let it play all the way through, comment, like, share it. It is a fair review of three crypto exchanges and it goes through their fees. It goes through their you know different fees, trading fees, fiat fees, onboarding, credit card, whatever, security, uh, their offerings, their advantages, their disadvantages. It's a really good video. I hope it does better in the algorithm. Uh, I hope it does. We'll see. Let me see Grayscale here. Grayscale premium rate now only 13% from Bitcoin. I wish, here we go. Only 13% versus spot, which is pretty damn nice. Pretty damn nice. We started the year, or let's say in December, this was almost a 50% discount. That discount has been eroded to just 13% now, and this is just a clear upwards trajectory. Looking back in the history of Grayscale, going back to 2018, we can see that it never actually has really traded in parity outside of June of 17 and September of 17. The rest of the time, it's spent at some kind of discount, which makes sense because there is no on-ramp to GBTC that an ETF would provide. There's no uh, access to new money or something. You actually had to just want Grayscale Bitcoin for some reason. I'm not really sure why you would want it without the kind of tax advantage or the money advantage on-ramps that an ETF would provide because it has a fee you have to pay yearly. And in reality, it really should never trade above spot. Spot is the same thing, but just better. More access to it, more control over it. Uh, it doesn't really make sense to trade above 100. But we are seeing that uh, premium erode very quickly. And that's spicy as we've speculated that when that premium is totally devoured, we're going to see something very exciting on Bitcoin. I still stand by that. Um, let me close the 8 million tabs I had open trying to find this. Uh, the open board committee, I don't think Jerome Powell speaks at all again. I just scrubbed through it. I do not see him pop up. A lot of these other people. I don't care about those people. Wait, 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 wait. I saw Jerome Powell for a second on screen. Let's see that. Here we go. We're going to play it. Change fees. I want to thank the staff for their efforts in assembling this great proposal, and I look forward to hearing from a wide range of stakeholders during the coming period. Thank you. Uh, I'll just say a couple of things. First, again, thanks for everyone's great work. I will support these proposals. Uh, I'll just point out, as others have, that we are fulfilling here a statutory responsibility that Congress has given us, and I think have done it to as well as it as well as it can be done. I thank you for that. And the last thing I'll say is that I look forward to seeing, understanding, and uh, thoughtfully reacting to the comments that we no doubt will receive. And with that, we will move to voting on the proposed rule. Rule. I need a motion to approve a notice of proposed rulemaking seeking comments on revisions to the interchange fee cap in the board's regulation II and authorize staff to make any minor or non substantive changes to prepare the documents for publication in the Federal Register. So moved. I need a second. Second. I will now ask for individual votes, uh, beginning with Vice Chair Jefferson. Yes. Vice Chair Barr. Yes. Governor Bowman. No. Governor Waller. Boom. Yes. No. Governor All right. Who cares about their vote? Uh, Je Re Jessica Rachel, what a gem. If you're out there, you're the program manager at the American Academy of Political Science and Social Science. I have a fun fact. My degree, my bachelor's degree is in political science. But shout out to, to Jessica for getting back to us. Um, she, she could not help us. And I, I mean, obviously, I didn't really expect it, but that would have been awesome. Someone emailed me a link. Okay, here we go. Shout out to Amar Malik. Thank you for emailing me. So there is no live video of it. However, we do have the opening remarks right here. So I will pretend to be Jerome Powell, as I commonly do. You guys know I love doing that. Um, here's the introductory remarks. Literally, I can read them for you. This is a lot of open. All right, it's a lot, but we'll go through it. I'll take it off of the uh, big screen so you guys don't can, I don't know, see the chart or something too. So here's the introductory remarks. <clears throat> I am Jerome Powell now. Smash the like button for me uh, getting into the spirit of Jerome Powell to deliver this in the best way I can. I am delighted and honored to introduce Professor Alan Blinder as this year's winner of the Daniel Patrick 
Moi Nihon Prize. I don't know how to pronounce that. This prize honor honors those who champion the use of informed judgment to advance the public good. I'm going to skip this part. Is there anything that's not about him? It's just talking about Alan. Oh my goodness. I think it's only about Alan. Let's read another paragraph about him. As Alan has observed in our political economy, there exist two neighboring tribes sharing common interests but separated by cultural and language barriers. That's, that's big facts. On one side of the broader, of the border, there is the academically, there is the academy, particularly social scientists, who work to assess the costs and benefits of public policies, actual and possible. On the other side are policy makers. Ah, that's a different split than I was thinking. Including elected officials as well as those who work at various government agencies. Folks in the academy side generally feel that policymakers would make better policy if they paid more attention to academic work. Meanwhile, policymakers often across often look across that divide desiring the academic work pay more attention to practical realities of policymaking. Not going to lie, guys, none of this. None of this has anything to do with anything. It is from the Federal Reserve. It's just about the guy who won. Maybe why they didn't live stream it. I don't know. If you want to check that out, I'll put the link in the chat. I do want to shout out Amar Malik for uh, emailing me that. That was dope. Great try. Like, I appreciate it. Hitting me up with it. I'm going to reply, you king. You king. T-Y. What a Chad. What a Chad. Lee Koloff, I appreciate this 10 super chat, man. Appreciate it. Uh, the target for the short. I don't feel really confident in this short, but the target is 34.2. What I would prefer to see, obviously, is 34.5 uh, not broken. I want to see higher lows. I want to follow this trend line up. I want to, uh, I want to hit back into that quarterly resistance. Unlucky thumbnail day. Skip factor, I know, dude. We got wrecked twice today on our thumbnails. Tall blonde girl, where have you been? Where you been, baby? How you doing? I told you we said nothing. Well, you were right. You were right. 42% uh, bullish moon moons, 31% delicious nothing burgers, and 26% nasty bear beans. Good vote, though. You brought us nothing. So I guess nothing burgers wins. We still have 750 people viewing, which is just rad. Sorry to let you down, Chirpow. Uh... We got his notes because it was not live streamed. We contact the, contacted the event manager. They replied, nothing, nothing, fam. Let me see this TA here quick. So the original target was 34.2. It was just a technical trade. It wasn't something I deeply believe in. Let me really quickly look here. Let me look at what I'm seeing. I need to look at what I'm seeing. Five minutes rolling over, two minutes rolling over. Three minute. Rolling over. 15 minute, actually not, not too bad. Uh, we did see momentum pinching in VWAP at zero, which likely would suggest maybe we see a little more downside, but I don't hate what I'm seeing here on money flow. We came off a higher low. We broke the most local high. And it does look like it kind of wants to retest the high in this structure. That is not that bad. The 30 minute was looking pretty bad earlier. Still doesn't look great, but actually way better than when we streamed earlier. We did break the high in money flow. VWAP coming down, momentum pinching. Very much following the 15-minute, almost the exact same uh, signal right there. 45-minute, looking to roll over. Although we have not broken this low, does not look quite yet ready to bounce. So that's not the best take up to the hour. Hopefully the hour has something juicy. Does not. Does have hope. The, one of the important things that I don't really point out when I'm going through this here is that while those time frames didn't look the best and I would expect maybe short-term downside, I don't point this out. Look at money flow. Like just, you don't have to look at anything else. Look at money flow. It has just been green. Just green with a very, very short trip in red there since the 13th. And while this doesn't look the strongest, it doesn't also look like it wants to just move to red. So it's like a little piece I don't usually share when I'm doing this analysis. Money flow is green. Money is entering the market, at least in an hourly time frame. And of course, you can say, duh, because look, we're going up. But uh, that should be weighed in. Is None of those time frames were like really in red territory. They weren't 
they weren't really bearish. Two hours con just continuing what it was doing. You got to love this. Look at this inverse head and shoulders right there on momentum. That's beautiful. The candles have been so pretty lately. I miss pretty candles. We talked about this on the live, and that's yes. one of the reasons we were a little bit more bearish. The four hour, we're not getting a rollover signal, but it does, I said it has like a little V shot, a uh, V shaped top building there. And I said, outside of having a really crazy four hour candle kind of appear out of nowhere, the four hour is showing a little bit of exhaustion. It's not the worst in the world, right? Momentum lows are still coming up. Your highs came up locally. This could come down and still just whip back up and come back into this pattern. So not the best, not the best, but not the worst. Six hour doesn't give a shit, just trending up still. I love it. All right, so nothing has changed on those higher time frames. Let's zoom in. If we're expecting a little bit more downside, where would we look? Hmm. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe we're wrong in expecting a little more downside. It's hard to ignore this five minute though. This five minute is absolutely showing us everything that we would expect or look for for a five minute. I got to close this tab. I keep accidentally un unmuting it. Uh, for a rollover, showing us everything. One, VWAP hit a lower low here. Momentum, lower high. Money flow, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, blah, 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 blah. And it's approaching the zero line. Now, VWAP is trending back up, which is decent, but after a lower low, it's not the strongest signal. Um, I think the likely scenario here, honestly, on the five minute is to see money flow dip into red and then come back up. And that might look something like this on momentum. VWAP coming up, not the worst. I don't, I didn't, I said I wasn't confident in 34.2. I'm still not at all. This is sketchy. This is sketchy. This is like really pushing the, uh, the structure here. This is down on the five second, which no sane human should use. We kind of have those exact opposite signals that we just looked at. Rolling over to the positive side, momentum coming up. VWAP high is coming up. Um, let's get like a 30, 15 second maybe. I don't hate it. A little bit of the same on the 15. Not quite the same on the 30 second. Looking a little sluggish still. Well, let's use other indicators, right? Uh, no real bear div there on your lows. Very neutral. A lot of very neutral readings. What I do like, and the reason I'm a little bit more skeptical of this lower target, what I do like here in a minute and a half will know. We do have wicks below our trend line. However, that candle is back above the trend. A close back above that trend, and I think we're moving back to 34.8. 34.8. Still got 750 people viewing. I like it. We we ain't no quitters, right? Mama didn't raise no quitters. If you're in the Discord, I shared this, and uh, you should highly highly recommend joining it. But I'll put it up here. We have a beautiful channel here, and honestly, wait, that's not that's not quite it. We have a beautiful channel here, and honestly, I don't remember the last time that I've seen such beautiful charts. Is that right or is this right? I'll put it here. This is a beautiful channel. Look at the look at this channel. Yes, you have wicks out of it. You even have a little brief period out of it. But this thing is just smack, 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 dip, smack, smack, dip, smack, smack, smack. So what I like is, well, where did we just touch again? Right here. Right there. It's kind of beautiful. Moving up on that channel, where would we look? Like right above us, slightly higher high, yeah. Slightly. Man. I got all pumped again to stream. Chirpow, honestly, what happened today is Chirpow rugged us. He rugged us. Here. There's a poll. You have a lot of options in that poll to express yourself.
I don't really see it. I don't really see anything. It's a rare time where I just don't really see anything. Five minute close. Five minute closed, and it did close above trend. That's not bad. I think this close above the trend means likely retesting that entry on the short. Not a lot else there. Just is what it is. Stupid chirp how it's okay. He'll make it up to us next Wednesday at the second final. There's one more afterwards FOMC meeting of the year. Stupid chirp how. Does he speak already, Dale Russell? We got rugged. Chirp how not chirping? I know. I know. Can I get a chirp how in chat anyway? He'll be back next week. Maybe he just needs a nap, right? Just needs a little sleepy time. 83 more likes. Are we that close to 420 already? Hell to the yeah. Guys, we have hit 420 likes now. When we hit this one, we'll have hit 420 likes on the last, like, five streams. Let's get this number up. If I click it really fast, maybe it'll go up. Click it really fast with me. <laughs> maybe it'll hack it. Ah, <sighs> let's I. I tried. We tried. I think it's I think it's kind of hilarious though that I talked to the event manager. Like straight up talked to the event manager. It's like, yo, yo, Jessica, is this being streamed anywhere, please? She's like, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. It's okay, Jessica. She's probably some I don't know, but she's probably like some little old lady who's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Please leave me alone. And I'm there like hassling her, like, could just could you record it on your phone and send it to me? <laughs> Like, this guy's threatening me. I didn't threaten her. He's hassling me. Oh, yeah, well. Oh, well. Let's, uh, I have an idea. While we wait for this to go. I now have 800 charts named October 16th. Copy, 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 copy. Because I just keep copying that one. Let's do this. Let's look really quickly at all the alerts I got. The higher high today already sold off on the dollar. Nice. Lower low on the S&P. I've already looked at that. Cyber. I don't know what cyber is. I don't even remember setting this alert. So let's take a look. This is a spicy chart of the day, I guess. Nice 26% here on cyber. I'm sure one of you DGENs tip me to look at it once. 36% daily candle on the way up. Has sold off a little bit here. Maybe I should just have uh, Chirpow just in the, t in the stream and title and thumbnail every day. And then just not at all address it. That'd be some good clickbait. I don't like that these fibs don't line up with anything. It's unusual. Like our 618 is right here in the middle of this candle. 786 is close to the daily resistance. That'd be 1161. It's close. Doesn't really line up with anything. I don't really know what to do. This is rare. We do have an order block on the day here at 850. You did break past this pretty clearly daily resistance. So it close above 584 today. Looking pretty good. Close above 584 and 850 pretty much on the table. Close below and you're looking for a retracement back down. Uh, nothing really clean here either. Except for maybe this. 450. It's a pretty deep retracement. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. We'll have to come back to this at some point. I'll put another alert. If it goes higher, I'll, I'll come back. GFAL. I tweeted about this earlier. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, GFAL, I don't know what it is. I don't ever remember looking at it, but it did set a new all-time high today. So it is technically in price discovery as long as there isn't more history somewhere that I'm not aware of. And since it's in price discovery, look for a close above the high today, hopefully above 2.8 cents, and then we can extrapolate out using our Fibonacci extension and retracement tool. Three and a half, four cent targets for profit taking. That'd be pretty good. Pretty good. Let's see this one. I'm going to throw all the fibs on. You know things are getting bullish when you see me putting 800 Fibonacci extensions on the same chart. We have confluence here with these extensions, roughly four cents. Hmm. Kind of some confluence here at three. But I don't want to, eh. That's, that seems really busy. Seems really busy, doesn't it? I'm going to set this alert as well. 
unless this g foul whatever this is unless this starts ripping up to these targets it is definitely in danger you're looking at some pretty gnarly bearish divergence on your highs if you don't get a an extended move to the upside that pushes that out i'm actually gonna get rid of that but that looks pretty good at this as support this as resistance there we go that looks pretty good we'll keep an eye on it uh BNB BTC, we talked about this earlier in stream. Wild chart does not look good. Does not look good at all. Pepe. Pepe. Pepe actually looks freaking amazing. Um, God, I did not expect that. Freaking amazing, weirdly. Uh, I managed to close my short in a rush on Wednesday. Thankfully, I did or I would have been liquidated. Pepe pushed up past 911. Hit 1050. Its resistance came back down tested 911 as support and painted a beautiful little order block there now it is just kind of chilling here at 1175 next upside resistance i'm looking for is 14.8 which is a pretty big move from here now i would not just market order in long here like i always say not a great idea potentially though someone could look to take a trade from that 1050 maybe you're a little more patient and you look for 10 flat the top of that order block or maybe you really don't care if you get filled here and you look for the bottom of the order block at like 931 which is of course always going to be the best move the most patient move and then you look to target you could just target right back to 1060 that'd be one to one terrible trade in my opinion or you could look for a 60 percent upside up to that 1480 which would be great if you don't get entries, if Pepe just rips up to 1480, which is entirely possible right now, it painted a very beautiful order block, it moved higher, it didn't get sold off right away. Those are all kind of pieces of evidence that it may not look to backtest it right now. You could, of course, do the inverse and look too short at 1480 and target those entries on the way back down. I think those would be really solid trades. Really solid trades. Uh, Solana moved a little bit higher. Solana does look like it wants to keep going. We were looking at those targets in the last stream. Nothing changed. TRB is a chart that I need to correct myself. So I was looking for 100, and I was like, that's probably about as much as it has. I was right in one sense. I said it almost certainly won't trade over 100 today, and it didn't. So I was right in that, in that sense, technically. But I definitely didn't think it was going to be trading up to 115 so quickly and in that spirit, there's very little left for TRB. Very little left in the way. Uh, let's throw a long time frame on here. You're already above any monthly close that it's ever had. You are below only one weekly close. That's 144. This is very weird. Um, this is very weird. I would never recommend this trade to another human. Never. But let's see what we can do. 150. That's hard. I would never recommend this trade to another human, not even my worst enemy. But it is possible with the right stop to potentially try to grab that move. I would cut it short if I was market ordering in, trying to scalp this. I would not wait for 166. But there's a potential to try to make a really risky position to ride it to 150 on TRB. Only because it's broken past everything, it's still moving up. I think this is terrible, especially like right here, right now. Let's see. This went back to 95. This went back to 80. I think at least if I was going to ever attempt this, I would try to wait for like 100. Even that is like, in my opinion, really degen. Um really degen but there could be there could be a trade there's very little resistance above it as i said that's the only reason i'm even entertaining this is you already broke everything now this is a super threatening structure on a low time frame here this looks very uh this looks very fall back downy so i don't think i'd ever take 100 here but i would potentially look for a long maybe at 50 if it comes interesting trb did not expect to see that much power Link we already went over today. It hit resistance. It fell back down. I'm looking for a better entry. Ator, whatever the hell this is. Ator, still continuing to the upside. In price discovery. I was reluctant to say that before, but it is now. 
absolutely in price discovery and it did not get immediately sold which is a very bullish sign for the market not gonna lie we had a bunch of coins break their all-time highs in the bear market but they immediately sold back down Cass is like a really good example where it just barely moved above its all-time high and then it fell flat here we are one dollar order block all the way up this i would absolutely not look for a long on uh this would be really 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 degen to try to just market order into this and i also will say market ordering short into this equally degen i would not look to market order short into something in price discovery there is very little we can do with this chart at all to look for more moves to the upside it does not have it does not have uh, many pullbacks it does not have big pullbacks we don't we can't really use our tool in the way we usually do we can throw on these other extensions and just pray i think that's not even the right move here i think this is uh, maybe a good learning lesson even though maybe nobody cares about this when we're in this scenario which is actually very uncommon to have this scenario um where we've already hit our measured moves we're in price discovery and there's no greater retrace that we can use. I think the real play here is to just target psychological. Target the psychological numbers. So we got $5, we got $2, $2, probably very clutch, probably a very, almost certainly if this moves to two, it will have some kind of pullback. Um, but we can't really find those any other way. This is just kind of relying on what we've seen before good luck to this good luck if you're itching for a position on this i would say it's likely to return to like one dollar and twenty cents that's a better entry than 140. but who knows this is a dangerous game i'm out of alerts trading view send me more alerts dude uh i and j we looked at inj again inj didn't move past yesterday but it did move higher and our trade on inj was fire that rhymed look at this channel isn't this channel beautiful? I told you, and you're probably like, that's not that beautiful. Look at this. Look at this channel. Even all this gibberish now, hitting it again, bouncing back up. When you find the right channel, man, you just keep tuning in and you subscribe and you enable notifications and you like the streams. <laughs> INJ, though, right at our target. Right at our target. That was a nice 84% take on that long. Congrats. Pat yourself on the, on the back if you took that. If INJ breaks higher, it's kind of in that same position as, what was it, uh, TRB. You break higher, and you have very little. You might have like $15 from these little highs around here, but your all-time high at 25 bucks is like the next solid target. 15 of course, being psychological, always in play. So you might expect something like this. If it continues to rip, coming back down, doing something like that always possible but we already hit 84 percent on it going long now is honestly kind of chasing the trade missing the trade mina did crazy stuff also i don't think i went over this today mina blasted and this is actually going to be some really good alpha here um this is going to be some good alpha you're not going to catch this anywhere else this is, this is valuable so mina was all the way up when we were looking at it and basically said dude you're at resistance going long here is silly and I know someone is eventually going to come at me with one of these examples and be like, see, you're wrong. You long resistance. This does happen. I, ca I call this like a skip. I don't know if there's a real name here. So what we saw is a blast through resistance with very little interaction. And instead of kind of moving up and coming back to it, it skipped. It just went right through the next one. So it like double jumped up to kind of the highest resistances it has outside of the all-time high. This is possible. It is not a good bet, in my opinion, really ever, but it becomes a better bet as we see this happen more and more. So right now I saw it on Mina. We maybe arguably might be seeing it on Solana. Uh, there's definitely other charts out there. Keep an eye out for these. Coins that just go past and ignore resistance and move to the next one. Once you start seeing that happen, then go forward and potentially look for it ha to happen on other charts, right? To kind of just guess for it randomly is a bad choice. But once you see it happening across the space, it becomes more probable. I do like that Mina has retraced to that resistance it skipped. And I mean, if it holds here today, it's looking likely that it wants to return to that like 93. Not necessarily this week, 
maybe over the month, something like that. Um, I wouldn't go long on, on your money with this, though, dude. That's, that's, a, that's way beyond my degen. ELG is not moving. Uh, what else do we got here? Bitcoin shorts. Nice. Bitcoin shorts on uh, Bitfinex are up 31% today. I like that. That is bully. What's this? CLV, not interesting to me. F proof of work? Is it finally time? No, this is probably never really going to be worth much in my opinion. I think they really wrecked the network. Um, it's cool to see it move. It hasn't even moved past where it started dumping yesterday. But if we get a little bounce here, $4.33. This is our original fair value gap support. We broke it. Seeing it return to there and reject, reject move lower would be pretty normal. If it breaks through, things can look all right. Gala, you look like dog, but you're looking a little bit better. I kind of am getting a link vibe though from this. Something like that, where you hit a slightly lower low, then you come back up to the top of this range. Of course, I may be wrong, and I will absolutely show you where I'm wrong. I'm wrong above basically these wicks. 1.8 cents. If it can trade and close above 1.8 cents, then it looks pretty good. If it does keep running today or into tomorrow to that target, that's probably a very solid short. In fact, oh, I can't add it on this because this isn't a real chart. But that's probably a pretty solid short at 1.8 cents if it gets there quickly. Hex is still at a penny. Still at a penny. Slightly higher high, but it hasn't moved. GRT. I know we looked at GRT the other day, and hopefully I, uh, hopefully I didn't shit on it. Hopefully. I was looking for lower entry. GRT, I mean, this is an interesting move. It's nice to see it move, right? But I'm just not super thrilled. I, I will say it did break here, and that's solid. I wouldn't be surprised to see a back test of it. Your next upside resistance, or in my opinion, where I'd look to take profit probably, 1281. I'm not in a position. I would be pretty happy to enter one at five and a half cents. But this is, this is just really hasn't moved relative to what's happening anywhere else. Any other big juicy numbers I missed here? 4% on ENJ. Is ENJ the one that we long the bottom on in the stream trade setup? I'm honestly, guys, I'm burning time because as time passes and higher lows are being set on the minute, this is looking more and more bullish. And if we, yeah, nice, sick. That is an epic trade. That is potentially one of the most epic trades. Time will tell. Uh, but as we waste time here, whether it's boring or not, sorry. But as we waste time, if this continues holding right here, which it does look so far, we kind of see a flat top painting on the one minute. If it returns to 38 or 34.8, basically we have tests of 34.8. Lows coming up, so it could do something like this. But we start to paint something that looks a little bit more bullish. If we come back here and break today's high, I think we go right back to 35. And I think, honestly, no, I'll say I'm rather confident that if we tap 35 again this week, we break it and we go higher. Rather confident. We hit it, we uh, rejected lower high, lower low came back to it higher low really no matter where it settles here unless it dumps down to that target of the short in which case maybe you want to hold on to it retesting it on the third test with a higher low i think we move higher and where is the immediate place i would look 36 37 4 right around there Move up, do something similar to this again, then make up your mind. Let's see if these are looking any better. Dude, look at that. I said uh, that the five minute likely would dip and just very quickly dip. I call it like a, what? I don't remember, jelly bean? 
I don't know, dip into the red and then come back up. It does look like maybe it's doing a little near miss kind of thing. Momentum caught very close to the zero line. VWAP is back up. The one minute looks significantly better than earlier. 15 minute VWAP now moving up as well. 30 minute doesn't. Still in the same condition. That's probably because price hasn't moved, right? Yeah. Kind of just hoping, wishing, praying. Go up. Just break up from there. Just break up. We're watching the paint dry. I'm just going to read the chat. Not too many chatters. I know. It was, it was total buzzkill today. When is Powell speaking? November 1st. November 1st, he will be speaking. Guaranteed. I mean, guaranteed we'll have the feed for it. Don't tell your friends that we didn't have it today. Don't tell them. You can mark that on your calendar. Birds aren't real. Of course they're not. There's the link. It's already set up. Wait, here we go. You rock. Thank you, man. Because we are never... Bo we're never being boring. We have too much time to find for ourselves. We are never being boring. Fair enough. Ooh, look at that little candle. Go up, buddy. 3 a.m. Gotta go. See a loading name. Thanks for tuning in twice today, brother. <laughs> John Foster. Daily reminder. Birds aren't real, bro. No, of course not. VRA. Uh, I'll pull it up. Bra. Burning time sounds spooky. We caught the epic short on Vra. I like this. Higher low. Moving back up. Where are we in the retracement? Is the question. We're at the 618. Certainly not a time I would love to go long on this. Not the time I would go long right here. But this is not bad. You, know, you hit a low, you hit resistance, you fell. Good. You retraced a little bit past the 618. That's a little sketchy. But now you're right back at the 618. That's good. You might look, you might look for it to reverse here, especially if Bitcoin dumps tomorrow or something. Probably would expect it to reverse back down to like 4.8 cents. Let me get rid of these again. Right around there could see that if you see a rejection here that's where i'd be looking but this is pretty good like you can keep doing this for a long time and this just looks good when you have these long periods and then you just hit a low and start moving sideways that's accumulation if you break past the resistance which is possible of course zoom out Probably looking for just about a penny. Just about a penny. That could be pretty good. I like it. I like it. Come on, Bitcoin. Do it. Is it time to party? We can party all the time. Doge. Adam. I'll pull him up. I know Doge hasn't done anything. I have alerts set. I'll know when it does something that I'm interested in. Adam, not super interesting. Um, might be interesting to you if you're heavily uh, invested in it. You do have some pretty nice bull, dirt, uh, bull div right here. You had a lower low in price. Your RSI was significantly higher. And I'd say even more importantly, it was oversold. You went lower in price, but you never returned oversold. That looks, that looks pretty good. Daily money flow is absolutely rolling over. Absolutely giving us the signal that it wants to hit that positive territory. VWAP is coming down, which is a little threatening here at the zero line with momentum. So we may expect something like this to happen. But it is like already, I feel like it's already committed to rolling over. It's just like, I just need my time. I'm doing it on my own time. Adam, unlike a lot of things, looks like it held its low here. Resistance to the upside, looking for 750. Currently at 7. Not much else there. Not a lot of other thoughts there for me. I'll pull up Doge. But I know it's, it has not done anything that I'm excited about. You know, let's look at... Screw that. All the other charts I'm going to do now, I'm just going to do them in BTC pair because that's going to be more important. Doge, just like BNB, broke its, like, two-year low on BNB, or uh, BTC pair. Not great. You do have support at about 100 sats. 
you are building bull div as well on the day or our silos are coming up. Flip this to a higher time frame. Wow, below the 200 day. Like, so you hit a lower low, you have bull div. That's actually not a terrible sign. If you look left to the week, February of 21, at 200 sats, we had a uh, rejection. Not once, but two weeks in a row. We had a close up there. Like, that could be the bounce, but it's absolutely a knife. Like, it, it could just repeat this behavior where it moves back up to a lower high, comes back down, and, like, eventually looks to target kind of that 100. You know, maybe I'm a little too pessimistic on that. Maybe it's more like 150, 145, 150. Um, not great not great but at the same time this is a pattern that's falling it has lower highs lower lows it's falling so we are going to look forward to resolve to the upside eventually we just don't have any way of telling when um, this candle's fun but this flat bottom is very threatening at 6 cents break a high get past 8 cents right here you can see I have the alert set get past, past 8.4 cents then you're making progress until you do that you can run up as much as you want underneath that value, and it is not significant. It's not significant. This is why we've been talking. I'm not saying this is going to happen. It's not even my prediction. But this is why we have been addressing or at least considering this possibility. This flat bottom, high is coming down. Not a very good setup for Doge. But that could break. That could just change if we get above 8.4 cents. just changes instantly. Almost got there. Coming back down to the trend line. Jeez. You know what it's waiting for, guys. You know. You know what? You know what it's waiting for, and I'm going to give it to it. Check out the video pinned to the top of the chat. Sign up with Femex. Use my link. Great exchange. It's one of the exchanges that is in the fair review video at the top of the stream. Make sure you've liked and subscribed and joined the Discord. Join us on Friday. We'll be live, and then again, November 1st for Chirpow. Crown out, baby.